Joining me now is Newsweek Senior Editor at Large and Article 3 Project Senior Counsel Josh Hammer. Josh, good to see you as always. Let's start with reports in the New York Post that operatives at the very highest level of the Democrat Party actually threatened Joe Biden with forcibly removing him from office unless he stepped down. It says the well-orchestrated coup to stop Biden seeking re-election has been in place for weeks, but the stubborn president fought against at every step of the way. Josh, my question would be, well, if you knew this guy was mentally incompetent for so long, why wait until the 11th hour then to give him the boot? That is showing complete contempt for America. What do you think? Yeah, I think contempt for America would be, if anything, a polite or charitable way to put it. I mean, when you look at what the Democrat media complex here in America has done for the better part of this entire presidency, they have lied through their freaking teeth. You know, those of us like myself have been saying for years now that the president of the United States is clearly physically and mentally not with the program. Just this morning, I saw a very lengthy article in the Wall Street Journal reporting that apparently the last time that Joe Biden actually briefed Democrats on Capitol Hill was October 2021, less than a month into his presidency. And the reason that it was it has been so long is that at that time, it was already obvious that the man could not complete a coherent sentence in the English language. So this cover-up has been going on for a very, very, very long time. But of course, the Democratic Party going up to the most elite levels, going up to the Clintons, the Obamas, the Pelosi's, the Bidens, all of them, of course, they hate democracy. They hate the American people. This is a party that is running to be a purported bastion of democracy. This is a party that during the actual presidential primary in their own party, they coerced all other would-be challengers to Joe Biden other than the nominal non-realistic challengers of Marianne Williamson and Dean Phillips. They coerced them all out of the race in the name of what else? Our democracy. And now they're doing this 11th hour coup against the voters' ostensible wishes. What else? In the name of our democracy. The whole thing stinks to high heaven. It, it, it is loathsome. And, you know, yes, this obviously has been a coup. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is probably the number one ringleader of this coup, but Barack Obama and Chuck Schumer very much have their hands bloody as well here. I think it's going to backfire on the Democrats. I really do. I think that it would have been better even for them to limp across the finish line with Joe from Scranton rather than to put up this DEI far left senator from California to try to win Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Good luck with that one. Yeah, all the best to them because not looking good already. Now, a missing persons alert has been rescinded for Joe Biden. He's not dead, apparently. He's alive after calling into his former campaign's headquarters to vouch for his chosen successor, Kamala Harris, and a warning, this is a total cringe fest. Joe, are you watching? You hear this clapping? <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> I'm watching. I know it. Uh, honestly, I, I can't deal. And before we know it, Kamala then tossed him into the bin and put him on hold. So, Joe, I'm going to recognise some of the electeds who are here and then I'm going to get back to you. Hold on a second. Way too much, uh, Joe, for one day. But Joe still gets his revenge. He's not going anywhere. Keep me out of, out of people's hair for the next uh, three or four days. But I'm going to be on the road and I'm not going anywhere. Josh, our old Joe is hanging on for dear life uh, by the sounds of that slurred voice. I mean, how cringe can this party get seriously? Where, where is he? <laughs> I, I mean, where is the president of the United States? I, I mean, what has happened to him? I mean, did he have a stroke? Did he have a brain aneurysm? I mean, is he on hospice care? Is he on life support? I mean, the American people deserve to know. I, I, I mean, what has happened here over the past 36 to 48 hours I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm a student of American history, this is pretty unprecedented in our history. To not only to not run for re-election, yes, there is some precedent for that. It has not been done since Lyndon Johnson read the, read the room in 1968. He saw his unpopularity in the Vietnam War. He decided not to run. But in the modern era, in the digital era, the era of mass television, it has not been done, again, since 1968. So for him to do this via tweet, you know, I saw some wag on Twitter basically say that this is the equivalent of dating your boyfriend or girlfriend for like five or six years and then breaking up over text message. Sorry, <laughs> honey. Sorry, didn't work out. Good luck on the next one. No, be a man. Have a conversation. In this case, have a conversation with the American people. Get your butt there to the Oval Office. Get on NBC, CBS, ABC, Primetime News and explain why it is that you apparently feel that you are not capable of running for re-election 
yet you can somehow still hold the nuclear football? You can somehow still hold the codes to launch nuclear weapons against Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin and the Ayatollahs in Tehran? N none of this makes sense whatsoever. And meanwhile, America's enemies all throughout the world, the ones I just mentioned, are surely licking their chops because they know that there is not merely just an empty suit at the helm of the United States right now. There is no one. I, I, I am an American citizen. I do not know who is actually running the country. That should be troubling to anyone. Absolutely. You, you spot it. I mean, the guy just writes a letter to America, disappears, phones it. I mean, where are you, Joe? You're exactly right, Josh. Now, look, Kamala Harris's campaign has raised more than 81 million US dollars in just 24 hours since Joe Biden stepped down. That is the largest amount raised in that time period by either, by either party in this presidential election cycle. Are you surprised that the money is coming in thick and fast? No, I'm not shocked because I think a lot of Democratic donors have just been waiting to see how the Biden coup attempt plays out before they cut a new check. You know, America's campaign finance legal regime is actually very complicated. Uh, ironically, Democrats are mostly to blame for that because they are the ones who have constantly been seeking to add new onerous restrictions when it comes to campaign finance law. But to kind of cut to the chase here, there are, there are serious legal questions in our U.S. code as to whether or not the money can simply transfer from Biden to Harris. So I, I have to imagine that there were any number of large Democratic donors, kind of the Trump derangement syndrome crowd, who were probably waiting to see how that played out before they went back to their checkbook. It doesn't mean that Kamala Harris is popular. I mean, her approval rating, her popularity rating are, if anything, consistently lower than Joe Biden. The early swing state polling that we've seen, does it, it does indicate that Kamala Harris does not perform any better. If anything, she performs worse against Donald Trump in all the key swing states. She's down by like six, seven points in Arizona, multiple points in Michigan, Pennsylvania. So, you know, it's not like they're in any better shape because of this. But again, I, I attribute that fundraising number simply to desperation on the part of the Democratic donor class and not at all to Kamala Harris's skills or more accurately, frankly, her lack thereof. Well, let's take a look at some of that polling now. Republicans haven't won a presidential election in the state of New Hampshire since Y2K, but the New Hampshire Journal poll shows that Trump may be positioned to take home the state's four electoral votes and that his quest was actually boosted by the Democratic nominee switch-up that just took place. But also have a look at this poll. Trump is ahead of Kamala 50% to 41 without leaners. But with leaners, Trump at 53%, Harris 47 So, Josh, Trump's still ahead. How do you read these numbers? Yeah, look, I, you know, I think Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, as of right now, are in good shape to be sworn in in January 2025 as president and vice president of the United States. I think Democrats were between a rock and a hard place. I mean, they were in an utter disaster of their very own making. Again, they only have themselves to blame. They are the ones who have basically zipped their mouths and had this ridiculous cover-up for the past few years there. But as it, you know, as it pertains to trying to limp across the finish line with Joe Biden or going with the horrifically unpopular Kamala Harris, there, there was not a particularly appealing option. You know, in theory, the slightly more appealing option would be to leapfrog both of them and go for Michelle Obama. But she, but she apparently has no interest. And I have to be honest with you, I don't blame her at all. I mean, they have a very cozy life, the Obamas. They spend time up in Martha's Vineyard. They really control a lot of the strings. They're kind of puppeteers as it is, calling a lot of the shots without the need to get any accountability for the pushback. So between Harris and Biden, it's basically a loser's bet either way. The question that I have is who is going to be her running mate? Because this is kind of the equivalent of during the Battle of Midway during World War II of hopping on board to be the passenger on a kamikaze plane. I mean, this thing is going to crash and burn. It's a suicide mission. Who is she going to get to kind of waste his or her political talents on a failed vice presidential run? I have no idea, honestly. No, I guess, uh, well, we, we may find out soon. But, look, let's move to the Secret Service now. The director, Kimberly Cheetle, how that woman uh, is still in a job is absolutely beyond me. But, look, the head of the agency, she's appeared at a heated committee hearing into what happened in Pennsylvania a couple of weeks ago now where Donald Trump was shot. And true to form, she still won't answer key questions about the catastrophic failings of the agency on that day. Director Cheadle, in your leadership, your agency got outsmarted and outmaneuvered by a 20-year-old. How can we have any confidence that you could stop a trained professionals from a nefarious nation state? Those are absolutely questions that we need to have. I know they're questions. To. Josh, what a ridiculous answer. This woman is in complete denial. How hopeless is she?
You know, like you, I, I, I am just absolutely astounded that here we are almost a week and a half after the former president, Donald Trump, almost had his head blown off in front of the entire world. Here we are, and this woman still has a job. You know, once upon a time in America and in Western nations more generally, there was such thing as a sense of shame, as, as a sense of, of self-awareness, whereby if you, were a, if you were a public official and something like this happens under your watch, you resign. You know, you have enough sense of dignity and self-respect to get the heck out of there. You know, in fact, I actually saw a headline maybe like two or three months ago out of Israel, and their IDF commander who was responsible for protecting the Gaza communities actually resigned about three months ago. And the quote that he gave, it's a very tragic quote, he said, I have failed in my life mission because he failed to protect those communities after the Hamas Holocaust of October 7, 2023. Ditto Kimberly Cheadle. You failed. Your, your, your vocational mission has been an utter and complete failure because as Secret Service Director, you really have one job above all, and that is to keep the President of the United States and their family safe and secure. This is ridiculous. And you know what? But there actually is a silver lining here before, before I finish. There's actually a very nice silver lining, which is the fact that after this outrageous hearing, which many people are saying here in America was the single worst congressional hearing they have ever seen from a witness ever. The silver lining is that in the aftermath of this, you have the chairman, Jim Comer, the Republican of, of Kentucky, who has written a joint letter with the ranking member of the Democrat, Jamie Raskin in Maryland, where they jointly are calling on Kimberly Cheadle to resign because she has disgraced herself. So if you get that kind of bipartisan unity these days in Washington, you know you probably messed up.